you're going to notice in this section that I'm not that interested in you learning all the theory in depth. What I'm more interested in is in you being able to apply the idea of differentials to problems like you would find in a business setting. For that reason, I'm only going to go through one example that I think illustrates a couple of different points with using these. By the way, there's also a lot of nice science uh, and other types of applications of differentials if you find yourself interested. But we'll focus on the business applications for now. So I picked a problem from the textbook, and in this problem we're told uh, that a company manufactures and sells X televisions per month. All right, so I, I want to pay attention to that. It tells me what X represents. We're given the cost and revenue equations, and we want to know the approximate changes in revenue and profit if we change production. Now, changing production is a change in X because we're manufacturing and selling X televisions. So when we change production, 1500 to 1510, this is a change in X. Okay, and then we're trying to find the approximate. That tells me we're thinking about a DY type of thing, a differential, change in revenue. Okay, so that'd be DR. And we're given a revenue function and profit. That would be DP, but we're not given a profit function. We'll figure that out in a minute. Now, the way I recognize again was because we're, or the way I recognize this is that we're finding approximate changes. So we're given a change in X, which clearly is 10, right? We went from 1500 to 1510. We're given a change in X and we're asked for a change in some kind of function of X. That's like a DY. So let's look at this and apply our formulas. I have the same information here, just condensed down a little bit. All right, let's focus first of all on the revenue because we have that function. So to find DR, the approximate change in revenue, I'm going to use my formula that says DR, or before we're writing DY, any function of X is going to be our function here. So before it was Y prime, which is the same as F prime. At this time, it's going to be R prime of X times the change in X, which is DX. Remember, sometimes we use delta x, but your textbook likes to use dx. Well, I already know dx because I looked at it and it was 10, but we'll write that down in a second. Let's go ahead and say, okay, r prime is this function prime. So I'm going to write that down, 200x minus, and I'm going to write this a little different, 1 over 30x squared. It's the same thing, but it'll make it easier when I take the derivative, prime. And then dx is the change from 1500 to 1510. So I subtract the larger value. I, I subtract from the larger value, the smaller value. So I want to multiply this by 10. All right, so taking this derivative, this is like an x to the 1 power. So when I bring down the 1, I keep the 200. But then I have x to the 1 power minus 1 power. That's to the 0 power. So this is just 200. And now I have minus 1 over 30 times... Bring down the 2, right? Keep the x, subtract 1. I have 2 minus 1 to the 1 power, so this is just 2x. And this whole thing is still times 10. Now, before I go plugging any numbers in, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. So this is 200 minus, now 2 times 1 over 30 is 1 over 15. You can double check that on your calculator. x, and then this will all be times 10. I'm going to leave the 10 out there just so that we see what happens to it. Remember, the question is, well, what's x? Because we still got to get a value for this. Where you started is x. So this is x. So now I'm going to actually plug this in and get my final answer. I will say this is 200 minus 1 over 15 times 1,500. And then that final answer is going to be times 10. Okay, so this is 200. Of course, you can pop this in your calculator. Minus... 1 over 15 times 1,500 is just going to be 100. Because think about 100 times 15 is 1,500. And then times 10. So in other words, I get 100 times 10. Did I need to write that out, right? Because this is just 1,000. Now, of course, it is very likely that I ask you to interpret this in some way. So all you would have to say is that revenue... will increase by $1,000. And that can be your final answer as well if I ask for interpretation. All right, so it was just applying this formula. Apply the formula. 
So profit ends up being a little bit different because we don't have a profit function. But something you should know for this course and for other courses, and well, it's just logical, is that profit, which we'll call P of X, is revenue, the money you bring in, minus cost. Two functions we have. So we just have to figure out this function, then we can apply the formula. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space in case it's longer than we think. Here's revenue, so I'm just going to write that down. I always like to write down my steps for stuff like this because we know how to subtract values with X in them, which means that it's prone to error because we might go too fast. So that's why I tend to write down the steps, even though I could probably, and you probably could, do some of this in your head. All right, notice what I did. I wrote down my revenue function, wrote down my cost function. The thing I got to be careful about, and now I'm writing down the revenue again, is distributing that negative. So this will be minus 72,000 and then minus 60x. Okay, now I just got to collect like terms. There's only a couple, right? This actually is going to be 200 minus 60, so that's 140x minus x squared over 30 minus 72,000. And I'm just going to remember, okay, this is the profit function. Now, I didn't want the profit function. I want the approximate change in profit, right? But I need the profit function to be able to do that because the profit or the change in profit is going to be dp, which remember your formula, it's the derivative times the change in x. I remember, we just did the change in x and it was 10. So now I had to have that function, but now I can actually find its derivative and do what I want to do. So p prime of x is going to be that big thing over there prime. Let's calculate this right here, and then we'll put it up there. So p prime of x, that's going to be 140x prime. When you have a number times x, the derivative is just the number. So it's just 140. Minus, now remember this is x squared times minus 1 over 30. So that will be 2x times 1 over 30. I know we can simplify that, and we will in a minute. And then minus 72,000 is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. So our p prime ends up being 140. 2 times 1 over 30 is 1 over 15. So it'll be minus x over 15. I'm going to plug that in up here now. So I end up with 140 minus x over 15 times 10. Notice what I did. I didn't take the derivative again, right? Because I did that down here. That's a common mistake. Once you found the derivative, Catch yourself before you go up here and don't do it again because there's an urge because you see the prime there. Now remember, x is equal to where we started out from, so that'd be 1500. So when I plug 1500 in, I get 140 minus 1500 over 15 times 10. Right? And just like before, this is 100, so it's 140 minus 100 is 40 times 10, in other words, 400. So I can say that profit will increase or will approximately increase by $400. And that will be my final answer. If you can do a problem similar to this, you'll do great in this section. Like I said, don't worry about the theory. But if you find yourself uh, or you know you'll be looking at more calculus in the future, it's worth reading through so that you understand uh, what you're headed into when you study this a little bit deeper.